So hello and um, welcome to this meetup and we are going to cover serverless orchestration and automation with GCP workflows. About me, a short uh, for those who will be re-watching this uh, stream of, of this meetup is that I am Marton, I am based in Turgumures, Romania. Um, my technological uh, palette includes a high profile on stack overflow with a top three podium with a lot of questions and answers, answers mostly posted for uh, for other folks like you. I'm appointed Google Developer Expert, GDE, since 2016 on cloud technologies, which means that uh, I'm very close to the Google Developer team and uh, I talk and my activities on the internet and communities are about the Google Cloud product as well. My favorite two pro products are BigQuery and Redis, which, is, uh, which are actually databases. This and other presentations are available on SlideShare. So essentially you can watch some of the slides as my examples will be there. Uh, I post my articles on Medium, so you could check it out. There is no paywall, so they are free as well. You can reach me out on Martin Kodok as well and some of the Stack Overflow and GitHub profiles are there under Pentium 10. So, what, what is for today? So I have this presentation about cloud workflows and we will see how challenges in connecting services is a problem and how cloud workflows addresses some common, some common problems that we meet and how they interconnect and orchestrate all this in the cloud. We will see some practical examples and we will see how to automate, orchestrate and provide reliable line of business automation in the cloud and also connecting APIs like external APIs. So this will be not only about cloud. So challenges in connecting services, whenever we implement a new API or a new stack of services, we often find ourselves that we need to define the networking layer inside the application classes and uh, communication and let's say a bus or a communication bus, message bus, something like that. And some of the pain points are that uh, connectivity it should be easy, but uh, in reality, you need to figure it out, especially when you are connecting two different APIs. You need to parse the results, which is a piece of code that uh, still need to be written. Also, you end up having the need for decision and conditional step executions, like uh, doing decision, following one of the calls. And these are fragment operations that you do and your code gets bigger and bigger. Out of the box, there is no built-in error handling and logging. You need to add it, even if the framework offers you the opportunities, but you need to implement it. And you eventually, I've seen in past, let's say not you talking about you, I've seen in the past that developers and junior and medium developers have difficulties with polling, setting a good retry with exponential backoff, testing, and actually being all this reliable. If we talk about operational way, it would be good if this something like, let's call our API orchestrator, what we build in house or we use one from the cloud should scale up and down to zero as well. Nowadays, when we talk about serverless, scaling down to zero is a, is a feature that we love because it costs less and uh, we love that feature. And scaling up is also needed because we need to address, let's say, campaigns, trendings, and even Black Friday days. So that's that's one thing that uh, we have it there. Last one, but not the last, is uh, authentication. We are dealing with a lot of OAuth, OEDC, and uh, API key-based authentication that we need to implement or use libraries and 
they are complex and could actually turn out uh, a problem. So these are the challenges. And what I want to cover is that you should see that cloud workflows addresses all these challenges and they will come they become an experience a nice developer experience with built-in handlings built-in stuff and all this turns out to be actually just uh, an easy way to ex experience apis so meet work workflows workflows is a product on the gcp platform on the google cloud platform it's part of the serverless uh, environment and essentially it's an orchestrator and integrator service as the name uh, suggests it's a workflow engine and it can connect a lot of stuff on the gcp palette uh, we may you may know that there are serverless compute sections where you for example you turn out a vm or you have a container app engine or cloud run nowadays even cloud function there are the apis let's say vision api document ai even google places google maps uh, and other apis as well like uh, let's say the queries api and the third one which is external to gcp are the external apis software as a services private or other clouds as well because using your workflows you could automate other clouds as well because everything which has an api can be automated as an external api i can name sending an email with sendgrid or sms with twilio or shortening a link with the bitly service and so on workflows sits on top of this and can automate anything which is based on a http service so in a nutshell if we want to add in a list what is gcp workflows we need to talk about the following items essentially it's a step automation as a service so it has a ser it's serverless it's mean that you don't need to provision a vm you don't need to provision a container capacity you actually deploy the ser the let's say the workflow which is not a function it's a workflow and it will automate http services it's on the google cloud platform it's managed so you don't need a sysadmin to actually have the capacity of the cloud workflow available it's based on a declarative workflow language yaml and json which turns out that for example yaml is something simple and easy to understand even by a kid or a junior developer and it's very error prone it you cannot do a lot of errors with using yaml once the syntax is okay and of course it's actually it's very great to generate yaml syntax so that turns out a feature because if you can generate yaml you can build out all kind of let's say visual workflow preparator or generating the underlying system for a workflow engine as it's a managed service it has a price which uh, i'm mentioning that it's extremely cheap like uh, there are different price components one is one dollar for one hundred thousand and the other is two and a half for one hundred thousand calls external means that it leads out of the gcp platform it connects externally as a feature there are lots of built-in decision if conditional executions you can uh, operate on variables you have the ability to work and, pre and prepare your code as a sub workflow you can reuse that based on parameters which are opens the world for recipes you could take out and use the recipes published on the internet or you could reuse your code from project to the project support for external api calls out of the box now this is something that uh, i really like because for example integrating bitly or sendgrid it's only five lines of code it's extremely simple we don't need to take care about authentication details of authentication we 
we add only our secret and it's ready to go. We add the parameter like what the, what the underlying API needs and it's ready to go. And of course, it's part of the Google Cloud Platform and integrates about anything without worrying about authentication. It means that if you have a service account that triggers the cloud workflow and the service account has access to access other products inside the Google Cloud Platform, the way is open, the door is open and the workflow works out great. So it provides also enterprise security. So for example, if you, have a, if you are a part of a corporate company where it's important that you define security by design or you have a compliance, you have the opportunity to actually use Cloud Workflow as an approved solution to automate the services. You have a way to actually make sure that all the accesses are coming to an authenticated way and they are only crossing the authentication where you have defined, they cannot access otherwise. Also, you could have a workflow which is triggered and the workflow triggers with a private service account, other APIs inside the Google Cloud services. So you don't need to expose some of the services, only launching and calling the workflow, initializing the workflow, only initializing the workflow. Also, it integrates with Secret Manager. Secret Manager is a product inside GCP where you load your secrets, like API keys, uh, private keys, and uh, other whatever we call passwords. These are not embedded inside your application. They are not part of the environmental variables. So they essentially don't get deployed. So they are not, let's say, hackable. And whenever they are, whenever we need them, we actually just get them from the secret manager. And that's integrated with cloud workflows as well. Also, it provides encryption in your app encryption at rest and transit, those are enterprise security features. A basic example, because that's uh, what people want to see first, is that, for example, if we have a, a step which gets a metric, we could use, for example, Cloud Function to return a metric. And based on a metric, we would want to do an additional step. Right now, if the metric returns more than 100, we are going to notify, which is another step in our, in our workflow. So essentially you will find on the right, you have two steps. Call my function is that it, it runs the first part, which is a get statement. It runs the cloud function and based on the results, on, based on the query, which is the input, the result is placed into this variable metric result. And that metric result is being used in the second step of the workflow in the condition line. And if the metric result body transaction number is greater than 100, it runs another step. This is just a basic example. But before actually going further, let's see in action how Cloud Workflow actually looks like. And let's leave our very first example. So if we are in a, inside the cloud, uh, let me zoom in a bit. So if you open Google Cloud Platform, we have our dashboard. We could locate cloud workflows in the menu, like for example, somewhere in the menu, because it's different for you, you could have workflows, but I'm used to actually use this search bar in the top to actually locate workflows dashboard. And once the workflows dashboard is accessed, you get this piece. I have a bunch of workflows added here as an example. You will be, you will get, for example, empty list, but once you create a workflow, you will have it uh, here as a variable. Workflow can be created also from the interface as well by adding a description and then uh, adding a part of the code, which is template based right now, but you could use your own language. You see a simu uh, simulated visualization of the workflow rendering of the steps in the right, and then you, can, you could deploy uh, this function as well. 
but let me show you how it works for a developer. So I'm using VS Code. Let me zoom in here as well, so that will be much more easier for you to follow. So I use Visual Studio Code, and um, what I want to show you before jumping into Cloud Workflows is that in order to see what Google Cloud Platform project we are using, we have here in the status bar the project of the GCP project that currently is active. This is a plugin, and that plugin is GCP Project Switcher. You could find on the VS Code Marketplace. And why I'm mentioning this? Because I created this uh, plugin for VS Code in order to show quickly the GCP project that you are working on, and you can switch uh, different projects as well. So go ahead, check it out. It's called GCP Project Switcher. Next, what we see on the interface is that inside this folder, I created the hello YAML file, a very basic example with a hello world function and returning a, a text. It could be something like hello cloud workflows. Now, this is a YAML file that we need to deploy in order to run our workflow. Deploying the project, let me continue the presentation slide. So here we have the anatomy of a cloud workflow. We have a file like YAML. We have the deploying process, which is, let's say, either a command line. I'm putting here a command line, but this is also API based. You could use API, you could use Terraform, you could use the UI as well also executing the same. So what you see here is that you deploy the function, which is hello, it has a source, then the hello is executed, it has an input parameter, which normally it's optional. We could have a workflow that doesn't need an input parameter. And then you can describe, describe last, because workflow could be executed thousands of times, you have an execution ID for every execution, but as a general purpose, you could describe the last execution and execution returns this structure, which is a reduced JSON structure. You see, for example, the start time, the end time, what the state is, if it succeeded or not. And you have here the result, which is either, an, either a string or a JSON, whatever you decided to actually implement it. Uh, inside your workflow. So next, let's go back to our VS Code editor and let's try to actually deploy this. You may have noticed that uh, I have a box of commands set up in VS Code to actually do this automated way because I like to do click deploy and click run, uh, click run, run. So what and how I define it that? So on the VS Code, you may know, but if you don't, there are a way to actually program tasks. If you program a task, you are able to define your own action. And here, for example, the let's say the deploy action is defined as a share command, and the share command runs the G Cloud Beta Workflows Deploy it takes out the current file name, like the base name or the file, and then the full path to the file. So if I click back to the hello YAML and I want to deploy it, and if I click deploy, you will see here that this is the full command that it's being executed. Gcloud beta workflows deploy hello and the path to the source. And this operation deploy it. Now, next, if I want to execute it, also, I can click execute. And this way, the execute actually runs gcloud beta workflows execute hello. And the execution is there. It returns you a command which you could copy paste from here to actually get that specific execution. But we have here describe last. Describe last is a command that is helpful for a developer to actually see the workflow execution immediately. 
So here we have uh, our results. You see here, hello cloud workflows. Now, if I change this and uh, I add here for, let's say, GDG Cluj, hello cloud workflow for GDG Cluj, I can, for example, I prepare the run command, which does all the deploy execution returning the values. So I click that, it's quickly executing, sorry, it deploys, then it uh, executes, and then it returns uh, the result of the execution. You see here now that Cloud Workflow for GDG Cluj is active, and this is one of the executions. Now, Welcome to workflows. This is how you are working with. This is just a Hello World, Hello World example. Let's see some other much more interesting examples. I will have some basic, let's say, initiatory uh, examples, and then we will have much more interesting expert uh, implementations. So, what use workflows for? I'm seeing people that they use for IT management automation. So they could combine with a scheduler, something like it could have a 9 a.m. trigger to do some task. It could wait for service checks and orchestrate all the cloud that you want to do and all the elements of anything you want in the cloud or any API in the world. So in this example, you see here that uh, you have a 9 a.m. trigger to start the Compute Engine VM, then you wait 60 seconds, and then you can log the event if it's happened because normally you started the resource, so you need to log it. And then you could, for example, notify the team on Slack that uh, the Compute Engine started. This is something that you don't need to programming, you don't need to deploy a solution or programmer or container an app of it. You could build out in workflows in three steps in order to do this kind of automations. And that's YAML, which you don't need to update it, maintain it. It's not a library, it's a YAML syntax. Also, you could use workflow inside your business application. You could have a, a step that, uh, for example, receives the order. Then you have a step to create an invoice. Creating an invoice is done by your application, which could be either on a VM or App Engine, Cloud Run, Cloud Function, where it's deployed, or even Kubernetes. You call that step. Then you have generating PDF as a second step or a second uh, microservice or whatever service, nano service as well. And then you send uh, the email using either Cloud Run together with SendGrid. So this kind of orchestration microservices and other APIs, other APIs here, you have SendGrid, which is external to cloud, is something ready for cloud workflows. Next is that uh, in cloud workflows, you could also process array element. You could run uh, conditionals and uh, uh, switch statements. So those actually help you to define the true workflow with uh, a lot of uh, three sections in order to have the full process uh, for your business logic. As a code example, because these are these were nice on the on the screen. As a code example, let's see some much more let's say interesting examples. I'm going back to my VS Code. And uh, I'm going to use another example from my folder. We could, for example, use Wikipedia's API, which is outside of the code, to actually query, for example, for Tesla keywords. So let's see what this does. I have my quick action here for run. And uh, let's see now what it does. So it returned back an array with options like what kind of uh, articles there are for Tesla as well. And as you see here, there are 10 lines of code to actually run a get statement. What you see in this file is that there are two steps. One is doing the HTTP get. This is the specific keyword action that you need to add, the call name. 
you have the arguments which are part for this uh, type of call which http get you have the url and the query and what you see here is that naturally all this is assembled in a http rest call so the parameters are actually turned into http and they are passed to this url and the result is being with, written to this variable result should be a json that's how cloud workforce works out works out and from there you could get and read whatever variable you want from the json syntax it's extremely simple it's a compact one if i want to change this and let's say uh, run for Cluj, we could uh, immediately change our workflow and it's extremely simple to actually see in action like deploying executing running and seeing the results of the workflow this is Cluj, for example what returned wikipedia for Cluj as well now getting to more much more complex example http get was uh, once you could for example add a retry statement i mentioned that in the beginning that connectivity is something that is hard to actually implement in a library but if you have out of the box solution where you could for example indicate a built-in predicate this is a built-in predicate but you have an advanced way to define your predicate as well but this is a built-in which has a max retry of phi, initial delay, max delay, and a back of multiplier, what we do with the back of multiplier. This is extremely great in order to consume APIs. Next. Let's move from HTTP to Bitly. For Bitly, you know it's a URL shortener, and look here how easy it is actually to connect. Uh, with bitly it's only 26 lines of code why we have uh, so many steps so first of all we have a step that assigns a variable we call it secret and assigns a text to it like a string which is our bitly api key this is the label inside the secret manager under we have defined the api key of our bitly account next is going to get the secret it's a http git get uh, statement for the secret manager which is part of the google cloud platform here in the url you need to put the api in order to get the content of the secret manager you need the project id and you need the secret variable name and you could have here the version latest so that's how you actually read out of the fly a bitly api key and you do not deploy it it's not part of your environment it's part of the secrets and an operational sysadmin or a, let's say somebody that uh, has in management has in their role to actually update the secrets they can update anytime the secret and they don't need to redeploy our app our workflow all this is working out of the box once we get uh, the secret we need to decode it because secrets are automatically returned with base 64 so actually this is a decoded secret bitly which we later use in defining authorization and for that after that you will see here that we are using input as a different domain because bitly api offers you to set the domain that you want for the short link and an input url which is the the blog of the gcp platform so let's see what this what this does so i'm running this workflow i'm expecting to actually deploy this workflow then to execute the workflow and then you will have the last executions output the last execution output is here what we see here is that the, sh the short link is here with EMP and the long link is there. And if I want to, for example, change this to, I don't know, bit.ly because that's how we are uh, used to it, I'm very quickly able to actually run and update my workflow and trigger it again with a different set of uh, inputs and such. And now you see here bit.ly.
So this is, for example, consuming a post HTTP request. So post is different from the get because it may have, for example, a header and instead of query, it has a body. And you don't need to define here a JSON syntax or a, let's say XML syntax. You define only with the YAML as a structure for your input parameters as well. As you have noticed, I didn't encode it or used any library to connect with Bitly. So I don't need to maintain a set of libraries, a set of uh, dependencies for my application. This is pure HTTP and it works as far as the endpoint is there. So I don't need to actually maintain this code uh, every two years for updates. Usually the APIs are there for more than seven, eight years. Good. Um, let me see. So, of course, there are examples like uh, how to do, how to define a dictionary, how to define an array, and there are expressions as well available. The manual is there, how to concatenate strings, how to do comparison and casting to string for a variable. There are conditional switch as well. Like, for example, getting the date, time, and based on weekend and week notation to actually do a switch statement. And if you do a switch statement, you are able to call a, a, a let's say, sub workflows. And this is when I introduce sub workflow, you are able to actually say with the next keyword a workflow, which is defined in the same file, in the same workflow definition. Here it's extremely simple workflow, which is just a return statement, but it could be your full blown workflow with all the code. And for example, you could reuse that code as well. Now, of course, there are other things in the manual, but uh, I don't want to spend too much time with it. So this is the post which I am showing to you live how it works which is Wikipedia, another example to running a get statement and using the results, the switch statement, which uh, I've shown to you, a sub workflow where you have, for example, the sub workflow as a name here. You could use parameters, which are called arcs at the calling point and in the definition, because definition is here, they are called params in the definition and the result of the sub workflow is being returned and you could use further that output as well. The thing is with the sub workflow is that the main and then when you use sub workflows, you have a main keyword and the steps. And this is the code is much more compact and you could define a workflow with this generic and you could just drop in. So, for example, running a query is something that you could write as a sub workflow or sending an email could be a workflow and you, you use the input, for example, defining the true, the subject, the body of the email just at the definition level. Sorry, just at the calling level, not at the definition level. They are extremely easy to use and it makes the programmer to actually work based on recipes and I keep a collection of my workflows that are uh, available for later use. Retries, I mentioned here, there is what, which status codes are uh, happen, are actually triggering a connection error or timeout. So these are retried for the default retry predicate, but you could define your own predicate as well. Okay, so thanks for being here so far. These were the basic introduction into Cloud Workflows for those that haven't seen Cloud Workflows so far. But now we are switching levels and we are going to the expert level. So next is a couple of complex examples inside GCP. And uh, let's see how these are executed or what you could do with workflows. These are documented as articles, so I won't provide too much inspection in the code and as because there is a full tutorial available on Medium and you could work out from there. 
So one of the things, the first example is that let's back up Firestore. And let's do that easy way with cloud workflows. We know that Firestore has, uh, let's say, API for backup, but it's not automatically invoked. And there is no managed solution for this. People forget it that they need to enable backups for their fire stores. For that, there is this article. So what's, what's going to happen here? We have a scheduler, which is set up to run, for example, daily or hardly, as we want the backup to happen. The cloud scheduler has uh, set up, for example, a service account key, which has a roles and permission set up in order to authorize the cloud workflow to access Firebase and to place the file on the storage. So it has, let's say, multiple permissions, the service account key that triggers this operation. It could be just a service account key set up only for this action as managers want because generic service accounts are actually an error prone inside the organization as a security point. So once the cloud workflow is triggered, it will execute the Firebase API that does the backup. There is an API for that, and the backup is placed inside the cloud storage because in the backup API, you could set and indicate the path the the bucket where you want the backup to happen let me show you that quickly in the code as it's extremely simple so it's only 16 lines of code what's on the screen right now it has an initialize step where you set the project you decide you set the firestore database id which is always default they didn't uh, added anything else right now you set up a bucket where you want your bucket to actually, the, your backup to be placed. And then you have the HTTP post with Firestore and the right Firestore database ID and export documents as a, an action on the API. Authentication built in, it doesn't use as a secret manager because automatically infers the permissions from the invoker. So that's why it's easy to automate the cloud because the invoker's service account is being used to ad address all the steps inside the workflow. And normally you have the backup bucket and it, it provides you the results. So only 16, 16 lines of code to actually run a backup you don't need to be a technical person to put this together. You have the full article on the Medium in order to run this for your Firebase backups. Next one, a much more, let's say, complex example is to use cloud workflows to get files from cloud storage and put them into BigQuery. You don't need an app, you don't need a VM, you don't need a shell solution. You could build this inside the cloud workflows. You have the execute workflow step, then it reads Google storage get items, and then for each, it's, it's an array. For each, it even extracts segments from an URE, which is, let's say, an index and a year from the file name, and then it uses that to infer the table where the data will be put inside BigQuery. This is a longer example. I won't demo it, but you will have you have the full article on Medium for this. And my preferred and some of the sysadmins extremely preferred way how to run shell commands and orchestrating compute engine VMs using cloud workflows. This is a fully serverless way. It's a secure way to actually connect to a VM and run a command for it. You could even preface with starting the VM and stopping the VM as well. Uh, if you have only a VM for a specific action, like uh, uh, running, a, running a daily import of, a, let's say, FTP file or an XML file from a sink of data that you have, or uh, you, you need to run some kind of specific uh, 
uh, let's say conversion of a file and you know and you need the vm only for that action you could start the vm do the action it could take 30 minutes and then stop the vm so you actually operate and orchestrate truly the cloud and you serve the time only for that action in pass so this uses cloud build in order to actually have the identity of where proxy as a tunnel to which is an industry way to define the firewall and to access a compute engine and then once you use the iap tunnel you are inside the compute engine and then you run the shell command this article as well is on medium as well it's a longer complex example there is another slide of it you, you could uh, use for example, the service account to actually set up the authorized uh, process and to also set up the identity aware proxy to run the necessary tunnel because cloud build is going to actually be used to connect to the Linux uh, VM in order to run the shared command for that. Now, conclusions, because we have seen a lot Oh, what we have so far seen that uh, you could connect and run workflows for enterprise business apps. Low latency of execution, no cold starts. There is no machine. There is nothing that you need to wait. It's fully serverless. It's there. You execute. You could trigger the execution by API, by share command, by uh, event arc uh, events or by cloud scheduler or all kind of ways to actually trigger a workflow. It has built-in error handling out of the box with configurable retry policies, which is extremely developer friendly. It has parsing variable, built-in JSON parsing and all kind of variable manipulation. It has a rich runtime. You have iteration through an array and you could embed steps sub workflows for readability to reuse sub, sub workflows and so on. Also, it provides cloud logging. It provides reading as a feature from Firestore using YAML syntax, something that people want to use and they love to use it because Firestore is being used by developers and by DevOps engineers as a, as a clipboard. Like I need a database to actually drop some variables there and to reuse later. Why not to use as a serverless solution like Firestore to drop and then later read the variable and people forget it that there is a way to actually fully automate this with serverless. It's extremely developer friendly because it's easy to build and operate. It scales out, uh, does not lose pay between steps. So eventually if you have uh, 10 steps or whatever the number of steps, you could have a dictionary that collects all the variables, all the details that you have uh, organized inside your business logic. It handles errors and timeouts. So whenever you are reaching some uh, network glitch, automatically the retry policy will kick in. It will do the retry. So you will you will have a full in, incorporated retry and timeout support for that. This means that you could do a maintenance, for example, on one of your services for five minutes and the workflow will see that as a timeout and it will retry. And when you put back in provisioning, put back in the serving state your application it will trigger it and it will actually continue to execute it and it's auditable it's very important to mention that it's auditable it provides a lot of audit logs why i'm mentioning this because a lot of sysadmins and corporate uh, clients devops and sysadmin engineers they are looking for orchestrators where the audit table is uh, is a developer universal right because their managers, their company policies, compliances need to be actually auditable and to know when, what, based on what parameters, who executed, what was the permission. It has access to only that permission and not something else. 
So essentially, cloud workflows is a solution to automate, orchestrate, and provide reliable line of business automation. The possibilities are endless. We could be marketing, retail, industrial, or even developer friendly. We have covered the orchestrating DevOps workflows, automating the cloud, but it could be the, also there's a marketing option to have a workflow-based email campaigns, discount promotion, of offering the discount and promotion only on specific customer action. It could be an industrial as well, where you can actually implement the true workflow based on maintenance needs, and then every step is being executed as the machine's maintenance sheet is describing for you. And you could, for example, use also for digitalizing, digitalization of internal policies, because you could have a sheet of policies that you could turn into a workflow, and then uh, you define that workflow very easy. Thank you for watching this and thank you for uh, trying out cloud workflows. If you have uh, questions, make sure that you use the chat as well. And uh, we will have Octavian to actually turn on the voice for others as well to actually provide a discussion for these workflows. And I want to mention while Octavian turns out, turns on the audio for others that uh, workflows. So yesterday they have launched and introduced connectors for workflows, which are, let's say, inbuilt uh, syntax uh, snippets that are available for quicker integration for workflows. There is a table of uh, services that uh, are enabled as a connector. And for example, a uh, list of co supported connectors, we could access something like uh, compute. And here, if you access compute, you will get uh, the list of operations that uh, you could use. It's a long list of operation. But uh, if I go, let's say, to BigQuery, because that's, that's a simple one. BigQuery even has an example workflow and others as well have an example workflow, how to create a data set, how to insert into, how to create a table, how to delete, and all these operation little pieces are added to the documentation as we speak. On top of that, uh, there are on GitHub, uh, the G Google Cloud Platform, there, there is a workflow demo repo where you could see a lot of uh, examples how to use uh, some elements as well. And also, Philip Napik, which is the manager for the Cloud Workflows product, it has on GitHub a couple of... Uh, workflows and connectors available out of the box like SendGrid, Slack, Twilio, Exchange Rate or Weather Map, automatically helping you to actually build out these examples as a copy-paste solution. So that's all from me. And now let's hear if you have any Q&A in order to answer some of your questions. Thank you, Martin. Uh, so, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions? Hi. Hi, Martin. Florin here. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, did you see workflows somehow used together with uh, other Google products like uh, the ads area or uh yeah mainly the, the ads area uh yeah that's an interesting question thank you florin so google as a as a company who owns a lot of services like uh, 
YouTube ways, ads, and all kind of operations. Uh, there, these divisions are actually different, and we need to observe as a developer that ads is not part of the cloud of the Google Cloud platform. So first, we identify that these two are different worlds or planets. Once we have identified this, uh, Google Ads is actually we could work like an external API because it's not part of the Google Cloud. It won't have, let's say, an out-of-the-box connector. Right now it doesn't have, but it's an interesting feature request that you could, for example, uh, vote on it. And Google Ads as an API is also REST-based, so you could automate and externalize uh, and see that as an external APIs. You could use it like it was like a SendGrid or Twilio services for that. Of now, course, understood. Yeah, but there yes, are yes. A, there are a limitation because I I explored this world as well, and I want to name out a, a limitation. This will work for services where you have the API key, you have uh, the connecting services. It works out great, but it won't work on specific endpoints where there is a concept of impersonation so in these apis there are some of the calls where you need to impersonate there is a concept of impersonation which means that on an action is executed as a person's account like my my personal email account or google account is executing an action this impersonation is not yet available inside the workflow. It's requested, but there it's not yet available. And uh, we wait in order for them to actually have us add a parameter that is going to enable this impersonation. So I'm mentioning this because I know this aspect and if you want to build everything out inside the workflow, first watch out and separate in a table which calls are, let's say, external calls and which need impersonation. The impersonation won't currently work on the Google Cloud Platform. Hopefully, they will add the support uh, this year for this uh, aspect as well. Okay, next question. Okay, so uh, Martin, I stop your mic, please re enable it. Okay, yes. Sorry for that. No problem. There might be no additional questions, but if there are, please post in the chat or speak up because we have enabled uh, we have enabled audio for that. Well then, if there are no questions, thank you, Martin, for this interesting presentation. Uh, and hope to see you soon for the next event at the end of May. Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for being invited and to connect with your community. Hopefully we will touch. Uh, yeah, we have in May another, on a, another event. Um, I can actually feature that as well. We are going to go deep inside the another amazing product inside gcp cloud run and to see how that uh, evolved during the years and what new capabilities have been added to cloud run as well so essentially uh, you should join it will be an interesting uh, meetup as well 
thank you for having me here. Bye. Thank you. Bye.